ladies and gentlemen respected faculties teachers uh, doctors trainees and my dear medical students welcoming you all and a very good evening to you all on behalf of bd physician facebook page group today we have a very important discussion and which is actually now a very burning issue regarding covid pandemic and this is the vaccination for covid 19 or vaccination against the covid 19 uh, we are very we all over the world all the medical personnel and all the vips all the common people are very much concerned regarding this vaccination and today we are very much uh, we are feeling very much honored and privileged for having among us a renowned speaker a renowned teacher of dhaka medical college hospital from 1997 to 2010 one of the most dignified and respected teacher of internal medicine a commonwealth fellow of respiratory medicine our respected teacher professor fm siddiqui sir and and he will discuss the covid 19 vaccine explain and today's our scientific partner is surveyor bangladesh limited now uh, i would humbly request our respected teacher professor fm siddiqui sir to uh, enlighten us regarding the COVID-19 vaccination. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. OK, OK. Um, very good evening to those who are watching this and also I'm welcoming those who will be watching this program in future. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Ahmed Sami Al Hassan who has introduced me with very nice and kind words. Of course, uh, he is one of my very favorite students of Dhaka Medical College. Today, I think the topic which I'm going to discuss, uh, once at the end of this topic, uh, we, many of us will have a basic concept of the vaccines which are now in practice. Today, my talk will confine to, first I will discuss about vaccine development steps, then technology of most talked about two vaccines, that is messenger RNA and DNA vaccines. And of course, very important and interesting part of these two vaccines, that is phase three trial results before these two important vaccine got emergency use authorization. And then I will discuss a little bit about preliminary plan of giving vaccine in Bangladesh. And finally, we will be entertaining question and answer session. Vaccine development has become a very important issue globally. As you can see here that most of the countries are trying to get a vaccine to combat this pandemic. And more than 200 vaccines are in different phases of uh, trials of these vaccines. In clinical development, there are 63. And vaccines in preclinical development are 172. I have given you a link of World Health Organization who are tracking and giving updates of different vaccines which are in the development process of development. There are other uh, track vaccine trackers there, are, but you can go and check with uh, in which phase in which stage these vaccine groups are. Of the most important upcoming new COVID-19 vaccines are two important vaccines. One is messenger RNA vaccine, 
which are being brought into practice by Pfizer BioNTech uh, vaccine, Moderna vaccine, and another vaccine, CureVac AG, is in phase three trial. Of other vaccines, which is important is DNA vaccine. They are known as non-replicating viral vector vaccines. Of these vaccines, most important is AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. Especially, we would be interested to know about AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine because these vaccines uh, are expected to be applied in Bangladeshi population. Then similar technology is being used to develop vaccine by Johnson and Johnson, which is almost, which has almost finished phase three trial. And there is another vaccine of DNA origin, which is Convidesa and of course, uh, Russia has their own Sputnik V vaccines. So these are important vaccines, which are now in clinical application in different countries. Now, before uh, I start, I would like to say that there are different steps in the development of a vaccine. Development a vaccine in its final stage is not easy. It has to pass through different stages and phases. Each of the vaccine has to pass through these steps. So there is a preclinical phase, then it starts as phase one, two, three, phase four, that is mass vaccination. And each of these clinical steps, they see uh, actually that each of the steps sees that safety and efficacy of the vaccine. Safety means when it is injected, whether it has got any local and general or systemic effect. Efficacy is divided into two parts, ability of the vaccine to prevent disease and ability of the vaccine uh, to prevent infection. We have to be very clear about these two terms because uh, disease is a state of is a state in which there is symptom signs and clinical progression of a particular condition. And infection is a condition when the bacteria or virus is inside the body, but it is not producing any clinical symptom. That is called infection. For transmission of the disease, it is very important that a vaccine should be able to prevent infection and also, of course, to prevent disease. Because those who are infected, if they are not producing any disease, they may be asymptomatic. Now, preclinical state of a vaccine is animal study. Usually, before bringing it into uh, phase one trial, a uh, vaccine has to go through animal study. Usually animal study is done in mice and monkey. What they do after preparation of the vaccine, the vaccine is applied into the mice and monkey and they see the safety. That is whether the vaccine has produced any local or systemic adverse effects. At the same time, uh, the vaccine efficacy is checked. Uh, it is checked by taking out the blood from the animal and then they see whether uh, antibody is produced or not. Once they have, they find that antibody is produced, they just then have to check whether this antibody is neutralizing or not. That means the antibody which has been produced by the trial vaccine should be able to neutralize bacteria or virus, in this case, uh, SARS-CoV-2 in the laboratory. Once it is, uh, it is found that the vaccine is capable of neutralizing the virus in the laboratory, then they, what they do, they take 
two identical groups of animals and they inject 50% of the animals with the vaccine and rest of the animals are not vaccinated. And then after a certain period of time, both the groups of animals are exposed or infected with the virus. And if it is found that those animals who were vaccinated is capable of preventing the disease or infection, and also they are safe in terms of local and systemic adverse effects, then they go and give it publication in peer reviewed journal publication. And also they have to apply this preclinical data in details uh, to the uh, regulatory authority. Once this gets approval from the regulatory authority, only then the vaccine is allowed to get into phase one trial. What do, we, what do they do in phase one trial? Phase one trial basically is first human trial. Healthy adults, usually above the age of 18 years are taken as participants. Usually their number is less than 100. They shouldn't be having any comorbidities. And injecting the vaccine in this group of humans, usually to see again the safety. Safety means whether the vaccine is producing any local or systemic adverse effects and efficacy. Efficacy means ability of the vaccine to prevent the disease or infection. Not only that, in phase one trial, also a dose is selected, which dose would be the best for subsequent tri trials. So different strength of doses are tried and seen the efficacy and safety. So phase one trial, once it is finished, then again, they have to go details of findings and the application and also to apply it for the phase two trials. In phase two trial, a little bit of larger number of participants are usually taken. Number of participants ranges from 100, usually less than 1,000. And this time in phase two, a diverse uh, demographics of people are taken, I mean, uh, different age groups with some of the participants having little bit of comorbidity. And also the dose which has been selected as effective dose in phase one has to be applied in phase two. When these participants are tried again, safety and efficacy is seen in phase two. Once this phase two trial is complete. All details is submitted. A peer reviewed uh, journal has to, they have to publish it. And with acceptance of the regulatory authority, then the vaccine is allowed to enter into phase three trial. Now, what is phase three trial? This is randomized double blind placebo control trial. And in phase three, thousands of participants are usually taken, as you will see in subsequent part of my lecture. Participants would be of diverse uh, demographics. They would be of different age, sex, color, race, ethnicity with or without comorbidities. That means a true representative of diverse population. And in this state, an independent data monitoring committee would be uh, monitoring the phase totally and they would have a P-specified settings that they would decide once the number of detecting cases reaches this number, then they will unblind. And after unblinding this, they will publish an interim result. If that interim result is in favor of the success of the vaccine, that means that if the vaccine is found to be safe 
and efficacious in phase three, then the authority allowed them to go into emergency use authorization. And followed by that phase three trial has to be uh, published in a reputed peer reviewed journal. And while this peer review process is uh, continuing the vaccines automatically given permission, and each of the country who gives permission for use of a vaccine which has passed the phase three trial, uh, they have to give official permission like USA has Food and Drug Administration, European Union has Emergency Medicine Agency, and in UK, Medicine and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, MHRA. They are the important authority who has given permission to certain vaccines, which has successfully completed phase three trial. And then the vaccine, as it is now we are seeing, goes for mass vaccination. And this is regarded as phase four. So normally what happens to achieve, to achieve this level, I mean, from preclinical up to getting emergency use or phase three completion authorization, normally a vaccine takes usually 10 to 20 years for uh, becoming available for mass vaccination. Now I'll discuss about the new generation COVID-19 vaccines. As you can see here, there are two sets of vaccines which are now in operation. As I said before, these are messenger RNA vaccine and DNA vaccine, which are basically viral vector non-replicating vaccines. First time in human history, this time messenger RNA and DNA is used to develop a vaccine. It is completely unknown before that a vaccine can be developed by using the technology of messenger RNA and DNA. And this is the first time in human history, a quickest time a vaccine is developed. Virus was isolated and its genomic sequence was done in 11th of January, 2020, and vaccine has been made available for application uh, in the month of November. Completely unprecedented uh, in human history that within a span of 10 months, a vaccine made available, and not only that, just made available for millions of people. And this is also first time in human history, highest number of scientists are involved against a single tiny little virus. Now these vaccines are not out of controversy. In the month of December, a very reputed organization, USA, they have uh, done a poll. They asked people, all adults, a question that is when a vaccine against the coronavirus becomes available to you, do you plan to get vaccinated? And you see the result, 47% of participants, they said, yes, I will get the COVID-19 vaccine. 26% rejected. They said that I don't want to take this vaccine and rest 27%, they are confused. They said that they don't know actually. That means even in USA, in the month of December, when the mortality and the pandemic has reached its crux, therefore only 53% is still not motivated to get vaccinated. And even same in India, a poll has shown recently that around 60 to 70% of population are not motivated, convinced to get vaccinated. So this is why this lecture I think is more important to follow. Now, why there is concern in the middle of the pandemic 
of this vaccine. There are few, there are a lot of concerns. I just recorded few of them, of which important is that people think that vaccine instead of protecting me, they may be important, especially those who are educated, even in healthcare pro professionals. They, many of them think uh, the vaccine can change my gene because the vaccine technology has used messenger uh, uh, RNA and DNA. So there is a concern that this messenger RNA or DNA might change our gene and might bring about a catastrophe. It, in its, it may cause severe allergic reaction. That is one common concern. And another concern is many of them think that the vaccine may not provide long-term protection. And if uh, it doesn't provide long-term protection, what's the use of taking the vaccine. So to get rid of these different confusions and everything, I think it is very important for all of us to understand the basics, fundamentals of vaccines. So first of all, I would like to discuss briefly about, before, before we understand the messenger RNA vaccine, how it uh, works, we need to understand a bit about viral replication. I'll try to make it very simple. As you can see here, I made this picture simple. So this is COVID-19 virus, SARS-CoV-2. You see here, that is lipid bilayer envelope, which keeps a viral RNA coil-like structure inside it. It is a very large RNA virus usually 30 kilobase. And this big lipid bilayer is embedded by several membrane. Of these membrane proteins, membrane proteins, most important as you can see, this spike protein. A spike protein uh, is one main target of the virus. There are other proteins uh, that is membrane protein, envelope protein, and nucleocapsid protein. The, each of these pro proteins uh, serves important function for the uh, function and maintenance and replication of the virus. For the purpose of effective vaccine, the spike protein is the target. Now I show you why this spike protein has become target. You see the virus with this spike protein, when it enters through inhalation into the respiratory tract, it goes into the alveoli, also the respiratory epithelial cells. That spike protein gets attached with a receptor into the cell membrane. Here I have shown a alveolar epithelial cell, which is type two pneumocyte. This receptor is called angiotensin converting enzyme 2, ACE2 receptor. Once the viral spike protein binds with this uh, receptor, then it is not enough for the virus to get entrance into the cell. There is another membrane protein, cellular membrane protein, which is known as TMPRSS2. That binds with the viral spike protein, causes cleavage, and brings about the virus and fuses with, with the a cell membrane by a process which is known as endocytosis. And by this process, the virus is drawn inside the cell and RNA is released in the cytoplasm of human cell. Now, once the viral RNA enters into the cytoplasm, of our cell, it gets read by ribosome, a process called translation. Many of us, we think that this ribosomal reading actually produces a copy of RNA, actually no. What happens, this first entrance when ribosome 
translates the viral genome, it produces one, two big protein, which are known as para proteins and one proteolytic enzyme. So in first step, it produces two large para protein and a proteolytic enzyme. This proteolytic enzyme breaks down the large para proteins and smaller proteins are produced, they are known as replicase and transcriptase. This replicase and transcriptase proteins basically plays very important role. What they do, one of the replicate and transcriptase protein is known as RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So these proteins act on the same ribosome, uh, uh, the same RNA virus. And what they do, they produce a copy of RNA. This copy of RNA is different from the original RNA copy because you see in this end there it was positive sense RNA, now this is negative sense RNA. That means that this RNA acts as a template for the production of other RNA. Now from this RNA, which is negative sense RNA, by the action of RNA dependent RNA polymerase, lot of copies of RNA produced, which are exact duplicate of the RNA, which was initially entered into the cell, but lot of copies. So the RNAs of the virus are produced within the cell cytoplasm. Next step is very interesting. What the enzymes do? They do a discontinuous transcription by same enzyme. That, that means they take segments of RNA, original RNA segments, and they produce smaller fragments of RNA. These are known as messenger and RNA. They are subgenomic messenger RNA. And each of these segments of RNA carries genetic code for individual proteins, which are needed for the virus. Now, this is, you see here, the first one is uh, messenger RNA carrying genetic code for E protein. The second one carrying genetic code for M protein. The third one, as you can see here, carrying the genetic code for S protein and the final one for N protein. Now these products, these proteins, which are produced from this messenger RNA comes together with the copies of RNA within the cytoplasm called rough endoplasmic reticulum. And from this rough endoplasmic reticulum, the virus is reproduced smaller copies of virus is produced. And as they produce, they go out of the cell in thousands and millions to affect other cells. Now, why I have discussed this? You see, this is S protein messenger RNA. What the scientists did in the laboratory, they took out, isolated this messenger RNA genomic sequence and took it out and made a copy, a synthetic messenger RNA, which exactly has the genomic sequence as it is in the cell cytoplasm produced by the viral RNA. Now what happens once the virus goes out? Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna, what they did, as I said, they developed a technology by which they were able to produce synthetic messenger RNA, which will only code for viral S protein. Not only that, this synthetic messenger RNA, they have capability of producing is commercially in millions of copies, large number they can produce it, but they face two problems initially. This messenger RNA, which they synthesized in the laboratory for commercial purpose, they have found out that this messenger RNA is unstable. 
because for reading and production of spike protein, the messenger RNA has to have a stability inside the cell cytoplasm so that ribosome can read it repeatedly and can produce several copies of spike protein. Now, to get rid of this, they have found out a technology. So the technology here is they have adopted a five prime cap at the head of the messenger RNA. And in the middle is the original genetic code for spike protein. This is called ORF, open reading frame. And at the end, there is a poly A tail. So this five cap and poly tail so keeping this messenger RNA stable in the cell, cell cytoplasm. Then there happened another interesting thing. If they, they thought that if they inject it into the human body, this total messenger RNA will be identified by the cell as a foreign protein, obviously. So the immune system will immediately destroy this messenger RNA. And not only that, there are extracellular RNAs enzymes, which will also destroy this laboratory made synthetic messenger RNA. So what they did, they come out with a technology by which they covered the whole messenger RNA that is called lipid nanoparticle. That is basically nothing but phospholipid bilayer covering of the messenger RNA. Now, you see, I made it, I tried to make it, I made it simple. So here you see that the messenger RNA vaccine, which is produced by Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna. Once this messenger RNA, they are injected into the deltoid muscle area of the participant, what they do, they basically, once they get entered into the uh, human body, the coated messenger RNA is taken inside the cell easily because this is lipid, phospholipid bilayer and human cell is also lipid layer. So easily the uh, messenger RNA nanoparticle gets fused with the human cell and the messenger RNA is released into the cell cytoplasm. Once inside the human cell cytoplasm, the ribosome starts reading this messenger RNA. You see here, this messenger RNA doesn't get inside the nucleus of the human cell. It remains in the cytoplasm. It is read by ribosome in the cytoplasm. And this is the process which is known as translation. And a lot of copies of the spike protein is produced in the cytoplasm. These spike proteins are carried to the surface of the cell. Now in the human cell, almost of the nucleated human cell surface contains a specific protein, which is known as MAC1, major histocompatibility complex one. Any antigen inside the cell has to be expressed through this MAC1 and because through this protein, our immune system can recognize whether it is our self or non-self. Once this spike protein is expressed through the MAC1 of our cell surface uh, and in, uh, immune system immediately identified this as a antigen and our immune system engulfs, comes and catches this antigen. And what they do, they, this, all these immune system cells actually have, there are three important cells, dendritic cell, macrophage, and lymphocytes. They have got specific uh, protein at their cell surface, which is MAC2. Only the antigen presenting cells and immune cells have this specific cell membrane protein. 
by which this virus protein is processed inside the cell and then expressed into the MHC2 at their cell surface. Then the antigen presenting cells carries this uh, protein to a regional lymph nodes where there are naive helper cells. These are known as CD4 T helper cells. Once this antigen, that is a spike protein, is fused with the CD4 plus T helper cells, these cells become differentiated and they start releasing specific cytokine, of which important is T helper 2 cytokine. These T helper 2 cytokines are very important. They act on naive B cells. And once they act on naive B cells, these B cells start proliferation and differentiation in millions. And what they do, they become plasma cell. Plasma cell, this plasma cell starts producing antibodies which are directed against this spike protein of the virus. Once these antibodies are produced, they are produced in hues and distributed throughout the cell, extracellular surface and into the body system. So anytime the virus enters into the body, immediately the virus is cut by the antibody and this spike protein are blocked uh, so the virus cannot get attached with the human cells and they are identified as foreign uh, viruses and they are destroyed. Not only that, plasma cells keeps on functioning as long as there is virus within the cell and the antibodies seem to remain in circulation for six to eight months. But the important thing we must understand there's a lot of B cells remain inside our system as memory cells. So sometimes we hear that the antibody titer or antibody may not remain in the circulation for six or eight months, after six or eight months. But it doesn't really matter because there are memory B cells. So anytime after that, even when antibody is not detectable. If virus enters inside the body, immediately this mem memory B cells will start functioning, differentiation, and they will start, they will convert into plasma cell and will start producing tons of antibodies. So we, if we see that the antibodies are declining, that does not necessarily mean that immunity against the virus is also inefficient. The memory cells are there and it has been seen that memory cells may be So sorry, it was uh, uh, for some reason, uh, it was a bit it. What happens next? Now you see these antibodies acts on viruses which are free. That means they only act on newly entered viruses, either in the circulation or into the body surface or anywhere. But the viruses which inside the cell, they cannot be destroyed by this antibody. So there occurs another thing. The T helper cell releases T helper one cytokine. These cytokines are very specific. They act on another groups of cells which are known as cytotoxic T lymphocytes. They are similar to that of natural killer cells. The, with the help of these T helper one cytokines, the cytotoxic T lymphocytes becomes very active. They become proliferated and they 
what they do they gets attached with the cells which contains inside coronavirus and with the help of this any virus which is inside the cell of course will project spike protein through mhc1 at their surface and immediately that cell will be identified by the cda that is cytotoxic t lymphocytes and they will destroy intracellular viruses so you see a potent immune response with the help of t helper 2 producing antibody and with the help of t helper 1 producing cytotoxic t lymphocytes both killing the free virus and killing the intracellular virus. That is how this Moderna vaccine acts. Now, I will show you very interesting how they inter uh, interpreted the phase data, how they did it. You see, in Pfizer-BioNTech for phase three randomized double-blind placebo control trial, they recruited more than 40,000 participants. And what they did, these participants, all of them were more than 16 years of age. And they were given at random uh, uh, in vaccine or placebo. The vaccine in a ratio of one is to one. That is double blind means those who injected the vaccine and those who received the vaccine Nobody knew exactly in which one there is vaccine and there is normal saline. Then how they divided the dose, they gave the first dose in day zero and a second dose at day 21, that is Pfizer-BioNTech. And they asked the participants to report seven days after the second dose to report to the, uh, to the a party parties to report to the researchers or given their phone number if they see any symptom which may be related to COVID-19. Once they come with the symptoms, they have done the RT-PCR of this symptomatic participants. So with doing this RT-PCR of symptomatic participants, when the number of RT-positive COVID-19 cases reached 170, as a pre-specified decision, the data, moni data monitoring committee unblinded the result. When they unblinded the result, they have found that out of 170, only eight cases occurred in vaccine group and 162 cases occurred in placebo group. And calculating this, they have said that 95% vaccine efficacy. Now I show you how they calculated this to reflect that the vaccine is 95% uh, efficacious. They, what they did, as you can see here, the total number of cases detected was 170 and eight was from vaccine group. So they deducted um, eight from 162 and it was 154. So when they found this 154 was divided by 162 and multiplied by 100, it showed 95%. So that's how the calculation is done. This is one of the way how they calculate the efficacy. Not only seeing the efficacy is 95%. They have found out that among 170 positive cases, 10 cases were severe cases. So severe disease prevention is also a concern. So out of these 10 severe cases, the one was of the vaccinated group and nine were from the placebo group. That means the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine was able to prevent severe disease by about 90%. So this is in short about the 
Pfizer BioNTech vaccine's efficacy and also its ability to prevent severe disease. It's a phenomenal, excellent result. Now, a problem with this vaccine is the vaccine has to be stored at minus 70 degree uh, Celsius. And kept in this temperature, it can be kept in six months. And when it is brought into four degrees Celsius, it remains viable or active for five days. So uh, preservation, transportation, and point of care uh, application for this vaccine is very uh, technologically has to be supported by all these uh, things. They have projected that they will produce 50 million vaccine by December 2020. And by December 2021, they will produce 1.3 billion vaccines. Now I will show you Moderna vaccine fact sheet phase three trial. What Moderna did, this is another messenger RNA. They took 30,000 participants and also they have done a double blind placebo control trial in a ratio one is to one. What they did, they gave their first dose in day zero and second dose in day 28. And they asked the participants to come back with any complaint 14 days after the second dose. And they started doing RT-PCR of those who returned with symptoms of COVID-19. And when the RT-PCR positive cases reached the number of 196, the data monitoring committee unblinded the result. One must understand that this data monitoring body is made of highly respected and very renowned scientists. They do not have any relationship with the production or the researcher groups. In fact, they don't have any conflict of interest with the vaccine group, either researchers or producers. They have found that out of 196, 11 cases occurred in vaccine group and 185 in placebo group. Again, they did this calculation. That is minus 11, uh, 185 minus 11, that is 174. 174 is divided by 185 and multiplied by 100, a vaccine efficacy of 94.1%. Now the severity of the disease is also a concern. As I said, they have found that out of 196, 30 severe cases occurred. And all of this occurred in placebo group. So Moderna said that their vaccine is 100% having efficacy of preventing severe disease. There is another advantage, relative advantage of Moderna from Pfizer BioNTech is that their vaccine can be preserved in minus 20 degrees Celsius for six months and minus four degrees Celsius can be one month. But practically for third world country like us, it, it is uh, virtually very difficult to have these sorts of vaccine remember uh, storing it and then distributing it and uh, applying it uh, common people. So they have to have special transportation preservation system. Projected production of Moderna is 20 million by December 2020 and 1 billion thing in billions and millions. This is only possible because they are commercially synthetic types. Of None of these Moderna vaccine and messenger RNA have any viral particle. They are completely synthetic. They are produced commercially in the lab. So that's why they can produce billions, billions of copies in very short period of time. Now I'm coming to AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. This vaccine is especially interested, interesting for us because we are expecting to get this vaccine. 
Now, this is a DNA vaccine. And DNA vaccine means this is a DNA which is a non-replicating uh, DNA vaccine. Now, this DNA is used as a vector. This is simpanji adenovirus is used as a vector. Now, why they use simpanji adenovirus? Why? Because uh, we adenovirus is a very common, human adenovirus is a common virus and causes common cold. So it is very likely they thought that most of the human population has been exposed in human adenovirus and they must have had immune system already knowing the virus. So if they try to inject uh, the adenovirus vaccine, the preformed immune system might even destroy. But the simpanji adenovirus, which will use the same methodology, but our immune system would not know the virus as foreign. And before it understands this is a foreign virus, by the time virus will already do its work. So this is a recombinant DNA technology they use. I'll try to make, explain it, how this is done. Now, so this is, you see the roundabout here picture, this is a simpanji adenovirus. What they did, this simpanji adenovirus has a certain portion or segment which carries genetic code for replication of this virus. They have identified that particular segment which codes for the replication of its own. So they have cut it and took it away. So they have created a virus who doesn't have that genetic code, which will replicate the virus itself. And they, what they did, they also isolated the messenger RNA of the COVID-19 virus. But the, what they did, they used a technology by which they converted that messenger RNA by PCR and enzymatic technique to convert that into a segment of DNA, which will carry only the code of spike protein. And then they reintroduced it into the DNA. So this is the recombinant DNA. Now this is adenoviral recombinant DNA. The red part is the DNA which carries the genetic code of a messenger RNA, which translates for spike protein. And so as because it doesn't have any replicating code, this virus is unable to replicate inside the human. Now, once they have produced it, they also produced it commercially. Thousands and millions of copies of this DNA is produced into the laboratory. After production, they, once it is injected into the human, what happens? This DNA with the viral particle enters into the cytoplasm. From the cytoplasm, it goes inside the nucleus. So this DNA virus of AstraZeneca recombinant DNA enters into the nucleus of human cells, but it doesn't get any contact with our DNA. Once inside our nucleus, our nucleus has special enzymes and proteins. They unfold this DNA and they read it. And when they transcript this DNA, from this DNA, they produce a copy of messenger RNA. Basically, all the human cells act by this mechanism. Any genetic information that is read by a transcription and produced a messenger RNA, this messenger RNA from the inside the nucleus comes out into the cytoplasm. Once in the cytoplasm, this messenger RNA is as good as 
the viral messenger RNA, which only carries the genetic code for spike protein. So what happens? The ribosome reads this messenger RNA and the spike protein is produced. This spike protein goes into the MHC1 surface, enters in presenting cells, carries it to the helper cells and two sets of immune response generated. That means the same as messenger RNA, only difference is the technology by which is DNA is used to produce a messenger RNA. Now, what AstraZeneca did for the phase three trial? There is a lot of talk about the study report of AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. They plan to enroll 40,000. And uh, it is said that they also even had a plan of enrolling 60,000 participants in their phase three trial. Now what they did, they gave first dose at day zero and second dose day 28. And after they asked all the participants, they didn't ask the participants to report. What they did after 14 days, the researchers did proactive artificial of the participants every week. So this is very unique thing, which was not done by Moderna or Pfizer BioNTech. Actually, they looked for asymptomatic infection because you see, if Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech vaccine prevents disease and severe disease, but it did not yet prove that they can prevent infection. Now, if anybody doesn't get disease or severe disease, but if anybody gets infected, still that person may carry the virus and may transmit the virus and may be a source of infection. So they did proactive RT-PCR participants to know that whether there is asymptomatic carrier state or not, and also whether disease or not. So when they found out that RT-PCR positive cases reached 131, their independent data monitoring committee unblinded the case. And what they found, they found that out of this 131, 30 were from vaccine group, 101 were from placebo group. So that gave a total vaccine efficacy of 70.4%. Now comparing with Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech, it might look less efficacious, but actually to for any vaccine to qualify to get use authorization, if it does more than 60%, I mean that vaccine is regarded as a good vaccine. So in terms of Efficacy, 70.4 is also is very good. Now, what they found also that it can be stored at normal freezer, that is between two to eight degrees Celsius, this vaccine can be preserved for about six months. So this is another advantage of this vaccine that it can be carried, utilized, and then be effectively distributed in country like Bangladesh. And production capability, they have projected that they will produce at least 3 billion vaccines in 2021. And another important thing, AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, they said, they declared that this is non-profit vaccine, unlike Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech, who will do business out of that. Now, there are controversies in AstraZeneca and vaccine controversy in their study. What controversy happened? That is, when they published the interim result, they have uh, found out that interim period, uh, roughly when the number of cases reached more than 11,000 and 4,080 were in Brazil and 7,540 were from UK. And what happened? The Brazilian arm participants 
received standard dose in both doses, that is zero and 28 days. But for some reason, uh, and their vaccine efficacy was 62%. But those participants who were in UK, because the vaccine was ordered and produced by two different firms, for some reason, the vaccine uh, dose was weak. So half of the uh, those who in the UK participant, first dose they received half of the standard dose. And second dose was full standard dose. And surprisingly, they have found out that in UK participants, those whose first dose was half a strain and second was full strain, their vaccine efficacy found to 90%. This created a lot of theory and hypothesis. The Oxford scientists say that they need to do further study whether they will continue with half dose standard dose policy or they, uh, they need to do further study. But what happened, the UK Medicine and Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority did a independent, their own uh, analysis, data analysis. And what they found, they found out that the trial, they concluded that the delay, there was a substantial delay between first dose and second dose in UK groups. There was a delay about 12 weeks, more than eight weeks delay. They were supposed to keep the vaccine at the end of the 28 days. That is zero day and 28 day. But instead of that, the UK participants got the second dose uh, at 12 weeks time because of production shortage or some other reason. Then they found out that the, probably this delay in dose in UK group has increased the efficacy of the vaccine. Not only that, they have did a secondary analysis. And in secondary analysis, they have found out that the of 21 days after the first dose, that is those who received the second dose at 12 weeks, in this period of time, the disease, disease prevention was about 70%. That is, uh, in, in one study I've seen it is 64.1%. That means that they concluded that even if second dose were not given, even then the protection capacity was about 70, 64 to 70%. That's why you will hear that UKMHRA has decided to give AstraZeneca vaccine as many as possible of their uh, population. And they have taken a policy to give a second dose of their vaccine between eight to 12 weeks of time. Of course, throughout the world, the scientists did not agree with this possibility or plan of their Moderna vaccine or Pfizer BioNTech did not agree to do with their own vaccines. Now, what about Bangladesh? Each of the whole world, the country has got their, every country in the world has got their own policy of implementation of vaccine. Now, there is a, uh, there is WHO World, the National Deployment and Vaccination Plan. It is known as NDVP for COVID-19 vaccines is done by WHO. That is WHO created and made a formula which is distributed to throughout its member countries and WBC, WHO advocated that the country should proceed 
taking this their plan as a guideline. So NDVP is a guideline from WHO for effective vaccine distribution. Bangladesh, as per NDVP, prepared a draft for deployment of COVID-19 vaccine, which is a live document. We must not forget that this formulation can be changed as per situation demands. And this formula, that is implementation of NDVP, will be reviewed, revised, as new information becomes available. This NDBP of Bangladesh strategy, it was, I heard that this was presented for, uh, for the health ministry approval in the first week of December. Now, Bangladesh government will give vaccine free of cost uh, to all its uh, target population in four phases, as I understand. In phase one, that will be phase A and B. And the target population is about 17.5 million. This phase will include doctors, nurses, paramedics, those who are far frontliners, directly involved in treatment of the COVID patients. Then same phase will include freedom fighters, frontline fighters of army, police, answer, BDP, et cetera, government officials, member of parliaments, and peoples who are of above the age of 60 and vulnerable group. In phase two, there will be population included in 50 years, age and older, critically ill patient, professionals, including teachers, journalists, people of field tracks, workers of mass transport, the students, pharmacy. And this will also include about 17.5 million. In phase three, rest of the teachers, education is officials, pregnant women, rest of the government official, which will be 35 million. And phase four will include students, rest of phase one to three, and rest of the general population around 70 million. In total, approximately 140 million that is 14 crore, which is approximately 80% of the total population targeted for vaccination. And if this 80% is vaccinated, then rest of the 20% can enjoy the herd immunity. So in conclusion, I would say that until today, total number of global cases of COVID-19 has exceeded 80 million with deaths of more than 2 million. And not only that, today, USA only recorded their highest death of more than 4,000 people. COVID-19 vaccine is showing some light at the end of the tunnel. Otherwise, the whole world shattered by a tiny little virus didn't know what to do. So the vaccines are showing some light. It is expected that long-term immunity of the vaccine will be maintained to get the human out of this pandemic. Procurement, preservation, transport, distribution, and point of care implementation of COVID-19 vaccine is the key for successful overcoming of the pandemic. Thank you all for your patient hearing. This is a picture. This picture was taken by me at the end of the November. It is Sajik Valley. His uh, sun was rising over the hill. And you look here, it looks like a river actually. This is not river, these are the clouds. A excellent picture, a thing to remember. So thank you all. With this, I end my today's topic, COVID-19 vaccine. I hope that you have uh, had enough patience to listen to it. Now I open it for question and answer session. Uh, thank you, dear respected teacher, mm -hmm. Professor Efim Siddiqui, sir, for his, uh, as usual, magical presentation and to 
discuss a very hard topics, a difficult topics in a very palatable way. Uh, sir actually delivers uh, the immunology of the uh, COVID-19 virus and the immunology of the vaccine in a uh, very palatable and easy way to the all uh, source, uh, all uh, all the doc for the, all the doctors of different disciplines who are listening to these topics. Sir, uh, there are a lot of questions in the chat box and we are running very short of time. So, sir, uh, if you permit, I can uh, yes, ask yes, the questions. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. J question turn ni ashole, sir. Shau ani ki kore chen. Prosom ko ekta concern, je sir, is antibody test is mandatory for vaccination? Karon ani kiri ani bolte chachen ani kamadar audience je. আমরা তো সাব ক্লিনিক্যালি অনেকই ইনফেক্টেড হচ্ছে আমাদের যদি অ্যান্টিবডি তৈরি হয়ে যায় তাহলে এই ভ্যাকসিনেশনের প্রয়োজন কি ওকে দিস ইজ এ ভেরি গুড কোশ্চেন আই থিংক इवन দোজ হু ডু নট নো বাট দোজ হু সাসপেক্ট দ্যাট দে মাইট হ্যাভ হ্যাড কোভিড 19 এন্ড অলসো দোজ হু নো দ্যাট দে হ্যাড কোভিড 19 প্রশ্ন হচ্ছে যে আমি যদি জানি যে আমার কোভিড হয়েছে অথবা আমি সাসপেক্ট করছি যে আমার কোভিড হয়েছে এখন আমি ভ্যাকসিন নিব কি নেব না দ্য ক্লিয়ার আনসার ইজ আমি কোভিড ভ্যাকসিন নেব এর প্রধান কারণ হচ্ছে যে যে অ্যান্টিবডি টাইটারটা দেখা হয় সেটা নট দ্য রিপ্রেজেন্টেটিভ টাইটার অফ দ্য স্পেসিফিক স্পাইক প্রোটিন যে অ্যান্টিবডিটা দেখা হচ্ছে আসলে Uh, COVID-19 viruses at least 29 proteins, more than 25, and different varieties of proteins there may be in the circulation. This is one point. Another point is immunogenicity and immunity is confirmed by a, there are two phases, actor primary, actor secondary, the boosting phase. প্রথমে যদি কারো এক্সপোজার হয়ে যায় এবং অ্যান্টিবডি থাকে বা ডিজিজ হয় এই প্রিলিমিনারি ডিজিজ বা এই প্রিলিমিনারি ইনফেকশন নট নেসেসারিলি গ্যারান্টিড প্রোটেকশন সেই জন্য সিডিসি ইএমএ ইউকে যে যতগুলো অথরিটি আছে ভ্যাকসিনেশন বডি আছে তারা একদম ক্লিয়ার কার্ড ওপিনিয়ন দিচ্ছে সাইন্টিস্টরা ওপিনিয়ন দিচ্ছেন যে যদি ইভেন সাসপেক্টেড থাকেও অ্যান্টিবডি থাকো ভ্যাকসিন নিয়ে নিতে হবে বিকজ ভ্যাকসিনটা কিন্তু ভাইরাস না ভ্যাকসিনটা রেপ্লিকেট করে না এটা একটা স্পেসিফিক স্পাইক প্রোটিন যেটার অ্যাগেনস্ট অ্যান্টিবডি সো এটা দোজ হু আর এক্সপোজ তাদেরকে ইমিউনিটিটা আরো বুস্টেড করবে এবং কনফার্ম ইমিউনিটি দিবে অ্যাগেনস্ট স্পাইক প্রোটিন হুইচ ইজ এসেনশিয়াল ফর প্রোটেকশন এটা মনে রাখতে হবে থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার এটারই একটা কমপ্লিমেন্টারি আবার একটা क्वेश्चन আছে অনেকেই করেছেন যে অলরেডি দ্য ডায়াগনোজড কেস অফ কোভিড 19 پیشنট বা এই پیشنট হ্যাজ বিন অলরেডি সাফারড ফ্রম কোভিড 19 ওনা ওনার কি ভ্যাকসিনেশনের প্রয়োজন আছে কিনা এখন পৃথিবী জোড়া যেহেতু ভাইরাসটা নতুন এবং এই ভাইরাসের সম্পর্কে সবাই ক্লিয়ার কাট না কিন্তু রিস্ক এবং বেনিফিটটা দেখতে হবে যদিও সিভিয়ার কোভিড হয়েও থাকে বা কোভিড হয়েও থাকে তার সেকেন্ডারি একটা রিইনফেকশন হওয়ার চান্স কতখানি আফটার এ পিরিয়ড অফ সিক্স মান্থস অর ওয়ান ইয়ার এটা গ্যারান্টেড না কিন্তু এইটা গ্যারান্টেড যে যদি ভ্যাকসিন নেওয়া হয় তাহলে তার যে ইমিউন সিস্টেম স্পেসিফিক্যালি অ্যান্টিবডি তৈরি করবে সেটা প্রোটেকটিভ অ্যান্টিবডি হবে সেজন্য ইট ইজ ওয়াইজ টু টেক ভ্যাকসিন আপনাকে দেখতে হবে কোন ফেজে আপনি পড়ে সেই ফেজ অনুযায়ী আপনাকে নিতে হবে আইডিয়ালি ভ্যাকসিনেটেড যারা না তারা ভ্যাকসিন ইমিউনোডেফিসিয়েন্সি ডিজিজেস বা ইমিউনোডেফিসিয়েন্ট 
পেশেন্টসদের জন্য স্যার ভ্যাকসিনের ব্যাপারে কোভিড 19 ভ্যাকসিনের ব্যাপারে কোনো রিকমেন্ডেশন বা কোনো প্রিকশন বা কোনো গাইডলাইন আছে কিনা স্যার হ্যাঁ গাইডলাইন আছে ইমিউন ডেফিসিয়েন্সি যারা অথবা দোজ হু আর টেকিং মেডিসিনস হুইচ কজেস ইমিউন সিস্টেম টু বি এ লিটল উইক তারাও ভ্যাকসিন ভ্যাকসিন নেবেন কেন নেবেন তাদের ভ্যাকসিন ইমিউনিটি তৈরি করবে হেলদি সাবজেক্টের মতো কতটা করবে সেটা যদিও গ্যারান্টেড না কিন্তু এইটা ঠিক যে দেয়ার ইমিউন সিস্টেম স্টিল ফাংশনিং অ্যান্ড দে উইল বি এবল টু প্রডিউস সাম ইমিউনিটি অ্যাগেন্স দ্য ভাইরাস সো ইমিউনিটি সাম ইমিউনিটি ইজ মাচ বেটার দ্যান নন ইমিউনিটি বিকজ ওই গ্রুপটা অনেক ভালনারেবল টু কোভিড নাইনটিন দেন হেলদি সাবজেক্টস সেই জন্য তাদের প্রোটেকশনের জন্য তাদেরকে ভ্যাকসিন দিয়ে দিতে হবে অ্যাজ আই সে যে এইটাই ভ্যাকসিনটা এই জন্যই আমি মেকানিজমটা ভালো করে এক্সপ্লেন করার চেষ্টা করেছি এই জন্য যে ইউসি এটা কিন্তু ভাইরাস লাইভ ভাইরাস না এমন না যে ভাইরাস ঢুকবে ইমিউনো ডেফিসিয়েন্সি আসে রেপ্লিকেট করে ভাইরাস নিজে ইনফেকশন করবে নো চান্স এটা কমপ্লিটলি ডিফারেন্ট মেকানিজম এখানে নতুন করে ইনফেকশন করার কোনো চান্স নাই বরঞ্চ ইট উইল গিভ সাম ইমিউনিটি থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার আপনার এই এক্সপ্লেনেশনটার জন্য এটা যারা অডিয়েন্স থেকে আরো আমি আর এই প্রশ্নগুলি রিপিট করব না কারণ অনেকেরই এটা জিজ্ঞাসা ছিল যে হ্যাঁ ভাইরাস দিলে আমার ইমিউনিটি তে কোনো হ্যাম্পার হবে কিনা বা আমি ইনফেক্টেড হতে পারি কিনা তো স্যার নাইসলি এক্সপ্লেইন দিস অ্যাকচুয়ালি যে দিস ইজ নট এ লাইভ অ্যাটিনুয়েটেড vaccine this is a actually a protein dead protein uh, which initiates to is the cell mediated immunity as well as humoral immunity tai oneki question gulo korechilen je amar immunity te kono modulation hobe kina jar karone ami abar infected hote pari kina to ei sob gulo proshno jawab sir ashole ekta explanation diye diye diyechen sir er kache kache ar ekta question sir immune deficient patient der sathe oneki jante chaichen je breast feeding mother lactating mother गाइडलैंड कतगुल बेनिफिट कैलकुलेट करें, so risk benefit calculate करें देखा गया थे, अब एक बार नहीं करें, पांच मोगोर, शे जो नो ऑफर करता है, किंतु जो दिन ना नहीं ते चाहे, then you cannot actually push for taking vaccine. Thank you sir, आरो एक ता एक मडार्ना <laughs> मडार्ना 
কিন্তু এগেইন দেখতে হবে যে ফাইজার বায়োনটেক ভ্যাকসিন কে প্রিজার্ভ করতে হয় মাইনাস সেভেন্টি ডিগ্রিতে এটাকে ক্যারি ট্রান্সফার্ট করতে হয় মাইনাস সেভেন্টি ডিগ্রিতে এটা মাইনাস ফোর ডিগ্রি তে নিয়ে আসলে খুব কুইকলি এটার অ্যাক্টিভিটি খুব তাড়াতাড়ি ভ্যাকসিন না দিলে সেটা হয় না অথচ অ্যাস্ট্রাজেনেকা অক্সফোর্ড ভ্যাকসিনটা কিন্তু নর্মাল রেফ্রিজারেটরে রেখে দেওয়া যায় অনেক দিন ওই নর্মাল রেফ্রিজারেটেই তাকে ট্রান্সপোর্ট করা যায় কিন্তু সো ফর অ্যাস্ট্রাজেনেকা অক্সফোর্ড ভ্যাকসিনের এফিকেসি কিন্তু লিটল লেস দেন দ্যাট অফ ফাইজার বায়োনটেক অ্যান্ড মডার্না থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার আরো একটা কোশ্চেন অনেকেই করেছেন স্যার রিগার্ডিং যেটা খুব এখন আলোচিত হচ্ছে যে সেকেন্ড ওয়েভ ইউরোপে ভাইরাসটার মিউটেশন হচ্ছে নতুন স্ট্রেইন হচ্ছে তো অনেকেই জিজ্ঞেস করেছেন যে এই স্ট্রেইন যে বিভিন্ন ভাইরাসের যে স্ট্রেইন ডিফারেন্সটা এটা ভ্যাকসিনের ক্ষেত্রে কোনো প্রভাব ফেলবে কিনা বা সেক্ষেত্রে ভ্যাকসিন তার এফিকেসি হারাবে কিনা এটা খুব কনসার্ন তো যেটা হচ্ছে যে আমরা যে স্পাইক প্রোটিনটা দেখি স্পাইক প্রোটিনের দুইটা পার্ট আছে যেটা উপরের পার্ট সেটা হচ্ছে আর বিডি বলে সেটা হচ্ছে রিসেপ্টর বাইন্ডিং ডোমেইন আর নিচের পার্টটা যেটা সেল মেমব্রেনে লেগে থাকে সেটা হচ্ছে মোটামুটি স্টেপল এখন যেই স্ট্রেইন যে মিউটেশনটা হয়েছে সেই মিউটেশনটা হয়েছে ভাইরাস কিন্তু খুব রেগুলার বেসিসেই মিউটেশন হতেই থাকে মিউটেশন হলেও যে ভ্যাকসিনের কার্যকারিতা চলে যায় তা কিন্তু না যেমন মিজলস ভ্যাকসিন পলিও ভাইলাইটিস ভ্যাকসিন মিজলস ভাইরাস পলিও ভাইরাস কিন্তু অনেক মিউটেশন হয়েছে কিন্তু লাস্ট ফিফটি সিক্সটি ইয়ার্স ধরে ভ্যাকসিন কিন্তু কোয়াইট এফেক্টিভ এখন এই মিউটেশনটা যেটা হয়েছে সেটা আর বিডি যেটা রিসেপ্টর বাইন্ডিং ডোমেনের একটা স্পেসিফিক জায়গার মধ্যে হয়েছে আমি যদি আমার এই হাতটাকে দেখাই তাহলে একটা অ্যান্টিবডি এসে এটা কমপ্লিটলি গ্রাফস করে ভাইরাসটা কেরকম এরকম ধরে ফেলে নাও যদি দেখা যায় যে এই আঙ্গুলের জায়গাটা মিউটেশন হয়েছে আমি আমার অ্যান্টিবডি এটাকে চিনছে না এটাকে ধরতে পারছি না এই ডাজেন্ট ম্যাটার আমার অ্যান্টিবডি এসে ভাইরাসটাকে এইভাবে ঠিক এনগাল করে সো এই স্পেসিফিক সাইটে মিউটেশন হলেও অ্যান্টিবডি এত ওয়াইড ওয়েতে গিয়ে ভাইরাস এনগালভ করে যে এখন পর্যন্ত ইট ইজ স্টিপুলেটেড দ্যাট দ্য অ্যান্টিবডি দ্যাট ইজ দ্য ভ্যাকসিন হুইচ আর ইন অ্যাকশন অ্যান্ড প্রডিউসিং অ্যান্টিবডি দে আর কোয়াইট এফেক্টিভ আরেকটা আসার কথা বলতে চাই যদি এমন হয় যে ঠিক আছে ভাইরাসটা স্ট্রেন অনেকগুলো এরিয়াতে এট এ টাইম মিউটেশন হয়ে গেল আর বিডিতে অ্যান্টিবডি তাকে চিনতে পারবে না কিচ্ছু করতে হবে না দা মডার্না ফাইজার বায়োনটেক বাক্সের এরা সেফ ওই ভাইরাসটার কে কালচার করে তারা ওইটার কাছ থেকে মেসেঞ্জার আর এনে নিয়ে ঠিক ওইটা যেই স্পাইক প্রোটিন নতুন বানাচ্ছে সে তার মিলিয়নস অফ কপি কপি বানায় ফেলবে অ্যাকচুয়ালি এম আর এন এ ডিএনএ ভ্যাকসিন একটা রেগুলেশন নিয়ে আসছে পৃথিবীতে সামনে যত প্যান্ডেমিক হবে তাতে দেখা যাচ্ছে যে যে ভ্যাকসিন তৈরি হতে দশ বছর পাঁচ বছর লাগতো এখন উইথ ইন এ স্প্যান অফ ভেরি শর্ট টাইম আমরা আশাবাদী এই টেকনোলজি ব্যবহার করে খুব দ্রুতই ভ্যাকসিন তৈরি করা যাবে এমনকি মিউটেশন হয়ে গেল সে মিউটেশনকেও ওভারকাম করার মতো সময় পাওয়া যাবে ধন্যবাদ স্যার এই আপনার এই প্রশ্নটার সাথে এটাও কয়েকজনের মানে একটু জিজ্ঞাসা ছিল যে স্যার এইচ আই ভি ভাইরাস যেটা অনেকদিন ধরে আছে সেটার মানে আগে যে যেটা বললেন স্যার যে একটা ভ্যাকসিন আসলে ইফেক্টিভ হতে আসতে দশ বারো বছর সময় লাগলো কোভিড এর ক্ষেত্রে কেন এটা এত খুব দ্রুত চলে আসতে পারলো মানে কি অনেকেরই প্রশ্ন যে তাহলে কি এক বছরে ভ্যাকসিনের সায়েন্সে কোনো রেগুলেশনারি চেঞ্জ হয়ে গেল দেখো পৃথিবীতে কিরকম কম্পিটিশন চায়না প্রথমে ডিক্লেয়ার করলো যে আমাদের যে নোভেল ভাইরাসটা দিয়ে নিউমোনিয়া হচ্ছে 
আমরা ভাইরাসটা আইডেন্টিফাই করেছি সেটা হচ্ছে একটা নিউ করোনা ভাইরাস এই হচ্ছে তার জিনোমিক সিকোয়েন্স ওরা এই জিনোমিক সিকোয়েন্সটা পাবলিশ করলো নেচার বা কোনো একটা পেপারে উইথ টোটাল ডিসক্রিপশন অফ সিকোয়েন্স এইটা যেই মাত্র পাবলিশ হলো সমস্ত পৃথিবীর যে ক্লাস আছে যারা নাকি সায়েন্টিস্ট তারা এটা তাদের ল্যাবরেটরিতে গিয়ে প্রথমে ভ্যালিডেট করলো যে চায়না যেই সিকোয়েন্সিং দিয়েছে অ্যাকচুয়ালি সেই সিকোয়েন্সিং এর সাথে এই করোনা ভাইরাসটা মিলে কিনা তো জানুয়ারি মাসে ওরা যখন এটা সিকোয়েন্সিং টা জেনে গেছে ওরা টোয়েন্টি থার্ড এপ্রিলে এক্সট্রা জেনেকা ফেজ ওয়ান ট্রায়াল শুরু করে দিয়েছে এবং এটা শুরু করার জন্য ওদের যত লজিস্টিক্স আছে তার মানে ধরো প্রি আমি এই জন্যই তোমরা তুমি যদি লেকচারটা ফলো করো দেখবার যে আমি প্রি ক্লিনিক্যাল ফেজ ওয়ান ফেজ টু ফেজ থ্রি এরকম করে এসছি এবং আমি বলেছি যে এই সব স্টেজ গুলো পার করতে বছর লেগে যায় কিন্তু রেগুলেটরি অথরিটি ওদেরকে ফেজ ওয়ান ট্রায়াল এর ইন্টারিম রেজাল্ট আসার সাথে সাথে ফেজ টু ফেজ থ্রি পারমিশন দিয়ে দিয়েছে শুধু তাই না বিলিয়নস অফ ডলার্স বিলিয়নস অফ সাপোর্ট ইনভেস্ট করছে তুমি যদি মডার্না ভ্যাকসিন দেখো মডার্না শুধু ইউএসএ গভর্নমেন্ট থেকে দুই সেশনে প্রায় বিলিয়ন অফ ডলার এইট পেয়ে গেছে অর্থাৎ ফেজ ওয়ান এপ্রিলে ফেজ টু মে মাসে ফেজ থ্রি জুলাইতে ইন্টারিম ডাটা ইউ মানে ইমার্জেন্সি ইউজ অথরাইজেশন সমস্ত বডি বডি বসেছিল শুধু থাই না এস্ট্রাজেনেকা তুমি চিন্তা করতে পারো যে মিলিয়নস অফ ভ্যাকসিন রেডি বানায় একদম ট্রান্সপোর্ট শিপমেন্ট করার জন্য রেডি হয়েছিল ইভেন যখন তাদের ফেজ থ্রি ট্রায়াল পাবলিশ হয় নাই মানে গভর্নমেন্ট বলেছে যে ইভেন ইফ ইট টার্নস আউট টু বি ইনএফেক্টিভ তোমাদের এই বিলিয়ন ডলার যদি লস হয় উই উইল কম্পেন্সেট ইউ ডোন্ট হ্যাভ টু ওয়ারি গো হেড কাজে পৃথিবীতে তো এর আগে কখনো কোনো কোনো সময় এইভাবে কেউ কোনো অর্গানাইজেশনকে সাপোর্ট করে নাই দ্যাটস ওয়াই মানে এই জিনিসটা এত তাড়াতাড়ি হতে পেরেছে পার্টিসিপেন্টস এসেছে মানি এসেছে সায়েন্টিস্টরা আগা এসেছে অল দ্য রেগুলেটরি অথরিটি রেডি হয়ে বসেছিল একটা ফেজ আসলে সার সাথে আর একটা ফেজে পারমিশন সো অল দিস ফ্যাক্টর অ্যাক্টেড টুগেদার একটা ছিল বিজনেসও ছিল এখানে কারণ আমেরিকান কোম্পানিগুলো ভাবছে যে আমরা এটা একটা বিলিয়ন ডলার বিজনেস অ্যাস ইউ ক্যান সি ইট সো তারা কম্পিটিশন ছিল যে এই ভ্যাকসিন যে ইফেক্টিভলি বের করতে পারবে তার আর কিছু করতে হবে না দ্যাটস ওয়াই দ্য বায়োনটেক কোম্পানি সিইও হ্যাজ বিকাম দ্য রিচেস্ট ম্যান ওয়ান অফ দ্য রিচেস্ট ম্যান ইন বায়োটেক ইন দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড উইদ ইন স্প্যান অফ ওয়ান ওয়ান ইয়ার অর্থাৎ ফেজ থ্রি ট্রায়ালের ইন্টারমি ইন্টারিম রেজাল্ট ফাইজার বায়োনটেকে যেদিন বের হয়েছে তার পরের সাথেই ফাইজারের বায়োনটেকের শেয়ার চলে গেছে স্কাই অ্যান্ড দে বিকাম দ্য রিচেস্ট ম্যান সো দ্যাট ইজ ওয়ান অ্যানাদার পয়েন্ট যে তারা কেন এটা এইভাবে সবাই লেগেছিল এটার পিছনে मानते আমি দিতে পারো না কিন্তু আমি যেটা দেখতে পাচ্ছি যেটা আই থিঙ্ক হুইচ ইস ট্রু সেটা হচ্ছে যে সিক্সটিন ইয়ার্স এর নিচে ট্রায়ালে কোনো পার্টিসিপেন্টস ছিল না অল দো দা পার্টিসিপেন্টস মোর দেন সেভেন্টি ফাইভ ইয়ার্স এর এজেও ছিল দিস ইজ ওয়ান নাম্বার টু ফ্রম দ্য ভেরি বিগিনিং দ্য অবজারভেশনাল স্টাডিগুলো দেখাচ্ছিল যে চিলড্রেন্স স্পেশালি দোজ হু আর লেস দেন 16 or 18 years of age in terms of vulnerability they are less vulnerable to the covid 19 than those who are above the age of 18 
specifically more than 50 or 60 years. She don't know at a kind of the body. J. Era J. To their system can combat with the virus and they are less vulnerable. She don't know if they are the final phase. But she should dig it. Maybe they will enjoy the benefit of herd immunity or maybe those Jara specifically. बांगेर मत डेभलपिंग कान्ट्री बनाल बनाए ओरा जोखन ओरा पर क्वालिटी कंट्रोल देखे तो जोखन ना कि प्राय सात आठ हजारे दया हुए गए थे वो ही वैक्सीन गुले क्वालिटी कंट्रोल करते देखा गया लो जे उइटर भीतरे जे डोज असे शेटा आश्चर्य हाफ स्ट्रेन बिकॉज़ तारा अनलोइंगली दे दिए से आठ तो उच्चे जे दया को था ट्वेंटी एट डेटे � क्या नो तार कारण होल्लो वो ही वैक्सीन प्रोडक्शन कोरे पॉइंट ऑफ केयर नहीं है जब वाली सर्च आती था ब्लाइंड कोरा सीरीज ब्लाइंड कोरा दूसरा वैक्सीन के सिमिलर कोरा और आरेक टा भालो कास कोर्से जेटा मैं बोलते भूले किसी और अ फास्ट डोज टा दिसे किंतु प्लासिबो दिसे किंतु मेनिंगो किचुटा जनो होए जाते कुरे गेस करते ना पारे जे इटा प्लासिबो एंड प्लासिबो पचे जो बायस ना हो तो एकोन ऐ इटा एक टा डिबेट चल से थ्रूआउट द वर्ल्ड अमी आमर ये ते वो यस्टा जेने का रोकने अमी डॉक्टर और कथा शुद्ध दूरी बोल ची जे अमेरी या यूके किन्तु पॉलिसी चेंज करे से तारा बोले से ज प्रथम डोज टा स्टैंडर्ड डोज एस मच एस पीपल के दे दिवो हमरा मैक्सिमम बेनिफिट पार जनो सेकेंड डोज टा दिवो ट्वेल्व वीक है ना मॉडर्न ना फाइजर बायोटेक अमेरिकन ओरा ओरा बोलते हैं जे हमरा ए स्ट्रेटेजी टा फॉलो कर बोलना बिकॉज़ हमादेर कोनो कारण नहीं टा फॉलो करा हमादेर इंटरिम डाटा अखुन बांग्लादेशे आमी हाफ स्ट्रेन दिवो की ना इटा तो आश्चर्य दे हैव डन इट बाय मिस्टेक एवं हाफ स्ट्रेन फुल स्ट्रेन किंतु डिड नॉट प्ले द रोल इन इम्यूनोजेनिसिटी जेटे आमी भालो भाई बोला चिस्टा करें ची जे इंटरिम डाटा अलादा स्टैटिसिशियन दे एमएच आरे तारे स्टडी करें ची एवं तारा बेर जे एटा हाफ फुल स्ट्रेंथ दे जो न होए नहीं, इटो इसे एरा आठ रत्त के पचपन न बच्चों बौशिर चिलो, एक दूसर नंबर होल्लो, एक तो देरी कोरे सेकेंड डोज दावते प्रोबेबली बूस्टिंग ऑफ़ द इम्यून सिस्टम वाज मच ग्रेटर देन ट्वेंटी एट डेज, ए कंक्लुशन ड्रॉ कोरे ओरा किंतु इटा दिसारेक्टा � एक्टर डेटा इंटरिम डेटा सेकेंडरी एनालिसिस करें चाहे डेट इस उरा करें चाहे कि प्रथम स्टैंडर्ड डोज जारा पेट से अमुं जारा बारूस तब तो पोरे के पेट से तादेव के एक उस दिन पर फॉलो करें देखें से जे अच्छा ये तो आठ दिन में पाए नहीं बारूस तब तो पूछ जून तो डोज पार पड़े तार फेटे क्यो तब मैंने इरा कंक्लुशन ड्रॉप कर लो इबे ना हमें जो दिस सेकेंड डोज डीएनए वैक्सीन ना हो दे ताहिलो किन्तु आमर 64 परसेंट प्रोटेक्शन हुए गए चिलो 
সেই জন্য ওরা বলছে যে যত বেশি পারি আমরা প্রথমে দিয়ে দিই ইনফ্যাক্ট জনসন এন্ড জনসন ভ্যাকসিন যেটা ডিএনএ ভ্যাকসিন যেটা আসছে প্রবাবলি দে উইল অপ ফর সিঙ্গেল ডোজ ইফ দে ফেজ থ্রি ট্রায়ালটা তাদের ফেভারে আসে সেই জন্য ওদের মডার্না আর ফাইজার কিন্তু মেসেঞ্জার আর এন এ ভ্যাকসিন এটা ডিএনএ ভ্যাকসিন ডিএনএ ভ্যাকসিন বাই নেচার ইট জেনারেটস এ স্ট্রং ইমিউন রেসপন্স আর একটা হচ্ছে এই ভ্যাকসিনটা ডিসইন্টিগ্রেট হয় না যেহেতু ভাইরাস এটাকে প্রোটেক্ট করে এটা ক্যারি করে সেলের ভিতরে নিয়ে যায় খুবই স্যার মানে হয়তো শিশুতোষ প্রশ্ন কিন্তু আমাদের সবাইকে ওয়েট করতে হবে বাট হোয়াট ইজ সিন সেটা হচ্ছে যে এই ভ্যাকসিনটা কিন্তু জেনারেট করতে পারছে বোধ বি সেল অ্যান্টি সেল দুইটা লিম্ব অফ ইমিউন সেল কিন্তু তারা জেনারেট করতে পারছে নাম্বার ওয়ান নাম্বার টু যে অ্যান্টিবডি তারা তৈরি করছে কোয়াইট স্ট্রং অ্যান্ড এনাফ রেসপন্স অফ অ্যান্টিবডি প্রোডাকশন এটা আরেকটা ভালো সাইন সো এখন যারা এই পেশেন্টদের উপর স্টাডি করছে তারা স্টাডি করছে মেমোরি সেল কিরকম তৈরি হচ্ছে এবং টি সাইটোটক্সিক টি সেল লিমটা কিরকম তৈরি হচ্ছে সোফার যতটুকু রেজাল্ট এসছে তাতে দেখা যাচ্ছে যে মেমোরি সেল অফ বি এবং টি সেল কোয়াইট স্ট্রং এবং কোয়াইট এফিসিয়েন্ট তাদের ইয়ে তাতে করে এক্সপেক্ট করা যায় যে ইমিউনিটি উইল বি লং লাস্টিং কতদিন হবে এটা এখন পর্যন্ত বলার সময় আসে না বিকজ এই ধরনের স্টাডি করে যে ডেটা আসবে সেটা কোনো ডেটা আসে নাই ডক্টর সামি স্যার আনমিউট করতে হবে হ্যাঁ थैंक यू স্যার ডক্টর রবিউল আউল একটা প্রশ্ন করেছেন ইজ देयर এনি প্রটোকল অফ ভ্যাকসিনেশন আফটার কোভিড মানে পোস্ট কোভিড মানে উনি যেটা করতে যাচ্ছেন আমি বুঝেছি স্যার যে পোস্ট কোভিড যে নিউ এনভায়রনমেন্ট সেখানেও কি এই কোভিড ভ্যাকসিনেশনটা কি থাকবে কিনা বা এই ধরনের কোনো মানে এই ফ্লু লাইক ভাইরাসের যে ভ্যাকসিনেশন প্রোগ্রামের মধ্যে রিপিটেড ভ্যাকসিনেশন হ্যাঁ রিপিটেড ভ্যাকসিনেশন কোভিড 19 ইট ইজ ইট ইজ এক্সপেক্টেড দ্যাট ইট ইজ আনলাইকলি দ্যাট রিপিটেড ভ্যাকসিনেশন লাগবে না এর কারণটা কি কারণটা হচ্ছে যে ইউ রিমেম্বার এই ভাইরাসটাকে আমরা বলছি যেটা এই সিমিলার সিস্টার ভাইরাস যেটা সার্স কোভ ওয়ান ছিল সার্স ওয়ান ছিল সেই ভাইরাসটার ইমিউনিটি যারা এফেক্টেড হয়েছিল নাও ইট ইস অ্যাবাউট 16, যে এই ভ্যাকসিনও উইল জেনারেট এ লং লাস্টিং 
protection because SARS-1, SARS-2 coronavirus are more or less similar. They are not like coronavirus, which are producing yearly influenza-like symptom. Hmm. Ahmed Samuel Hassan, you uh, probably you are unknowingly muting your sound system. Had Honovat sir, a Utunto lively among Pranovonto, a Kalochonar Juno, to Ami Tamojar question the Ashlatsky discussion to Sashes Kurta Tachibe. The Bangladesh Chicket Shock Shamar, the Bangladesh Shadron Jonathan Byron, a question to the Shita. আপনি বুঝতে পারবেন যে সবারই একটা কমন কোশ্চেন যে স্যার ভ্যাকসিন নেওয়ার পরে কি আমরা মাস্ক ছাড়া চলাফেরা করতে পারবো কিনা ভ্যাকসিন নেওয়ার পরেও আমরা তিনটা জিনিস একদম আমাদের সেইভাবে প্র্যাকটিস করতে থাকবো সেটা হচ্ছে মাস্ক তারপর হচ্ছে হ্যান্ড ওয়াশিং এন্ড সোশ্যাল ডিসটেন্সিং আমরা কখন মাস্ক ফ্রি হব Shitter act a set criteria as be. Jeta Shomboboto World Health Organization will tell us when it will be time. Drama Bola Tikhoven, I am not the authority. But I mean to both of you, Je Amra Ochire Hoto Shidege Gejabu, Kinto Shishomaya Konash. That will take time. Uh, thank you, uh, dear respected teacher, our mentors, Professor FM Siddiqui, sir. So, sir, after Judy, Amade Shabaru, the Shikichu Bolar Take, Shetamra Shuntachaya, Kisa Kushon Kepe. Akun a vaccine to the Amajita Ami lecture their rector of the Shuche, J. Ami Dehetsi, J. Common people and Mutta the confusion are say. আমাদের মধ্যে যারা healthcare professional uh, different branch of আমাদের uh, medical profession এর আছেন তো বিভিন্ন জনরা আছে তাদের মধ্যে কয়েকটা ব্যাপারে কনফিউশন ছিল এর মধ্যে একটা ছিল যে ডিএনএ ভাইরাল ভ্যাকসিন মেসেঞ্জার আরএনএ আমরা জানি যে মেসেঞ্জার আরএনএ আমাদের ডিএনএ এর সাথে ইন্টারঅ্যাক্ট করে কিনা ইত্যাদি সো আই ওয়ান্টেড টু গিভ এ basic fundamental idea about messenger rna among dna virus i think eta jodi abar ke repeatedly dekhe tahole antoto eta clear hoye jabe je viral vaccine gulo kibhabe kaaj korche tate kore je sondho ta moner moddhe chilo je eta amake kono harm korbe kina seta clearly evident je eta kono obostha de amar dna ba rna er sathe Intermodal Corvina, at all safe safety and efficacy dig them for a chest. I told CJ Amar Huegalo, Ami immunity Jacuchi. So Amadi immune system can do it or an Aramijani, the innate immune system among adaptive. Amy Tokon Jetabulici, set adaptive immune system. Kinto act immune system, it a যখন সে রিপিটেডলি ট্রেন হয় তখন এটা এফিসিয়েন্ট হয়ে ওঠে আমার প্রথম একবার এক্সপোজড হয়ে গেল কোভিড হয়ে আমার একটা ইমিউনিটি হয়েছে কিন্তু আমার ইমিউন সিস্টেমটা যদি ট্রেন হয়ে যায় এবং সেটা যদি রিঅ্যাক্ট করতে পারে সেকেন্ড থার্ড এক্সপোজারে আর এই ট্রেনিংটা দরকার আছে যে যখন ভাইরাস তার আমি আবার এফেক্টেড হব how quickly my adaptive immune system can neutralize and destroy the virus. A training to John Hula Amadir booster dose Jerukum Nahoi, Sherukum Amadir, even if we are uh, having, apparently having the disease, having the virus recovery, Huegesi, still uh, vaccine now. Edute Amar observation so far, Akon Pore Oito Egluto shop. Data upon Nibro, Akon Pujunto, current J data Tate, advocate Kora Hutsetai. Sheduno Shomosto Pitivite, Shobai, we phased wise vaccine Nienich, frontline Jara, Tarokin to Nietzsche, although many of them 
were exposed or that the antibody chilo or to what are positive chilo. फेसबुक पेज यूट्यूब चैनल संरक्षित अपना जो इच्छा तक अभूतपूर्व सीचुएशन क्यों कगे देखी गल्पर बढ़े सहित बढ़े महामार कथा तो दिको निर्देशना क्षेत्र गुरुपूर्ण भूमिका रखे व्यक्तिगत सर निजे कॉविड आक्रांत हो सुस्थे सर क्यों पुरो दुस्तर भाव कॉविड नाइनटीन जरा आक्रांत रोगी चिकित्सा सेवा दिए जा समय आशा करी सर भविष्य आबादय सर जो ज्ञान आलो से आलो आलोकित कर सर 